Greetings and welcome. I am Daniel Stern, the Code Whisperer, and in this short video we're going to learn all about arrow functions in ES6. Arrow functions. What is an arrow function? Is it like a regular function? Yes, more or less. For starters, let's write ourselves a regular function. We'll call the function say name, and it will just return whatever it is it's passed to it. So if I type say name ettered, it returns the name ettered. Now let's rewrite that as an arrow function. Arrow functions aren't written with the word function, they're written with the words ver or let. So I can say ver say name. And then I make that equal to an arrow function. So I'll draw the arrow function in here. On the left side goes the argument, so I'll pass name. And on the right side goes whatever the code is that's supposed to run. So here I've defined say name as an arrow function. If I try to use it, you see it works in the same manner. Another important detail of arrow functions is that the value of this changes inside of them. Or rather, it stays the same. Let's have a look. We'll define a class called Stark. And the Stark class will take a name, and it'll set it to a variable called this.name. And then it'll set an interval, and every, every second it will log its name. All right, so when we run this, it should log the name every second. Let's see what happens. We'll say new Stark, make that ettered. Hmm, and it doesn't log any name at all. That's because inside of the function in set interval, the value of this changes and becomes a new value, not the value as before. However, if this was an arrow function, this would still be the same as above. Let's give that a shot. I'll refresh the page. And now I'll take that function again and write it, but instead of function, I'll use an arrow function here in set interval. Now if I run that and create a new Stark, now it logs the name every second, because in the arrow function, the value of this is the same as in the scope above. With the regular function, it becomes a different value. All right, finally, let's look at writing arrow functions in shorter format. So let's say I have a list of names like so. Now let's say I wanted to create a map where I add a last name to each of those names. So I could say names.map and then pass it a function with an argument called name and then say return name plus space stark. And as you can see, I have my map of names. But that all takes a long time to write. Could this be rewritten as an arrow function? Let's try it. Let's get rid of the word function here and replace it with an arrow in the middle. That still works. Next, if you have just one argument in an arrow function, you don't need these round brackets, so we can write it like this. Further, if the function part only has one statement and the statement returns something, you can omit both the pointy brackets and the word return. So we're left with name and then return name plus stark. Still works. 
Finally, in arrow functions, it's appropriate to abbreviate the argument. So we'll just make this n. All right, so see how names.map function name return name plus stark became names.map n n plus stark. It's less than half the length and it's much more readable. This is the main reason why arrow functions exist, to do this. So we've looked at the shorter syntax and the changed value of this. We know pretty much all there is to know about arrow functions. Well, I'm Daniel Stern, the Code Whisperer. Have yourself a code-filled day.